Hello and welcome to this, the eighth lecture in the series of lectures on building technology. This lecture will look at brickwork. So in previous lectures we looked at historic stonework and the methods and materials used in its construction. But alongside stone we have to consider brick. It's an important building material. We have large parts of England and the remainder of the UK that have brick as their primary construction material. So it's something you're going to come across. And in Scotland, most areas had their local brick maker, brick manufacturer. And brick has a long history as a building material. It's a technology which uh, hasn't really changed over time substantially. And this lecture looks at the history of brickwork to give you that background and the principles of modern brickwork. So the most basic type of brick is a sun-dried brick. And these have been around for about 9,000 years. And they're predominantly found in areas where the climate is warm and dry. Um, they're made of mud and clay mixed together with usually straw, made into a paste, pressed into a mould and then set out to dry in the sun. So it needs a, an area where there's significant amounts of heat in um, hot seasons to be able to dry these bricks. They also tend to work best in areas where there's not going to be frost or significant amounts of rain because they are susceptible to that. And these early bricks were a significant technological step for builders and architects. They could be made to a uniform thickness, which meant that we could build buildings in a very consistent way. They allowed for very large structures to be built. We didn't have to mine stone to be able to build these big buildings. And brick also allowed for decoration to develop. There are some instances where impressions or inscriptions are made into the brick before it's dried. This wall's from an Elamite ziggurat in western Iran, which dates from about 1250 BC. And the methods of making brick are historic and haven't really changed much in time, and these methods are still used now. And we can see drawings from tombs from ancient Egypt, where they're, they're taking water and mud, they're forming it into pastes, they're pressing it into, into moulds, they're then laying these moulds out in the, the sun to dry and uh, then carting the bricks away. So we refer to these bricks as pressed bricks. And to think about a modern uh, method of producing a, a mud brick, they haven't really changed for, for the last 7,000 years or 9,000 years actually. Mud's mixed with sand to help reduce shrinkage. The mixture is then ground with water to make a paste and pressed into a timber mould, although modern methods might use steel for durability. The bricks are then dried in the sun, and if they're to be fired, they're then put into a kiln to produce a, a durable brick. The alternative to pressing a, a wet mix, a mud mix, is to use a dry mix. And this is very similar, but we're, we're using less water. We're creating a, a much thicker clay mix and it's pressed into the mould and that allows it to get a much sharper edge. And we can see in modern times that bricks are still made in this same way. Um, we can see in this picture the, the woman with the, the brick mould, the timber brick mould, the, um, the piles of bricks behind her, and each of these bricks is, is a fairly uniform shape. And sometimes bricks are referred to uh, or mud bricks are referred to as adobe and uh, this system has been used throughout the world. The, the word adobe has become synonymous with a style of architecture which is from uh, the kind of New Mexico area of, of North America. Bricks that are used in adobe buildings in New Mexico are usually load-bearing so these aren't just a skin of a building um, and they're protected from the weather by the application of a plaster finish. The Romans developed fired bricks around 15 BC, producing the first significant buildings, and they adapted to earlier techniques from the Greeks. And the reason that they moved to a, a fired brick was that mud bricks dry very, very slowly. And really, you're only being able to produce dry bricks in warmer seasons of the year. So by firing bricks, we could, we could dry them very quickly, and we could produce a consistent brick um, on a mass-produced level. 
Roman bricks weren't bricks as we would think of them today. They were a very different dimension. Roman bricks were generally very thin, about one and a half inches thick, and they were very wide, 12 inches wide, 300 millimeters, and about 18 inches long, although some longer bricks have been found at three feet. And it wasn't unusual for Roman legions to operate a mobile brick kiln. They took their brick kilns with them when they went out on campaigns around Europe. And we can actually trace the mark of these legions throughout buildings in the UK and the rest of Europe. But we have to think about what a modern brick is and what it's made of and how it's produced. And generally, bricks are made of clay and water. Sometimes they have other aggregates mixed into them or admixtures. And depending on where they're from in, in the country or the world, they will have a different colour because of the materials and the chemicals and the minerals within the, 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 the brick. And clay bricks and pavers are made up of a great variety of natural clay deposits. And they can produce a different characteristic depending on how they're fired and how they're manufactured. Clay is usually crushed, mixed with water, to form a, a dough or a pliable material, which can then be pressed into different shapes and sizes. There are a couple of different methods of making modern bricks. One of the most common is an extruded brick, where we're forming a, a paste and putting that into a machine so it's mechanically pressed through a shape or a die to form a continuous extrusion, and then that's cut to a set width. And this method would be the predominant method for making structural bricks, as it gives a nice, hard, dense result. If we see in the picture behind the, the, the text here, there are three holes within the, within the brick. There's three perforations. And that allows for less clay to be used without compromising the, the strength of the brick. These bricks are usually lighter and easier to handle. And because they're extruded, they have different thermal properties from solid bricks. A second type of brick that we come across commonly is, is a concrete brick, and we, we wouldn't necessarily call these bricks. Um, they tend to be talked about as blocks. And they're typically pale grey in colour. We make them from a small aggregate concrete, which is then pressed into a, a steel mould. It's vibrated to reduce the amount of air in it, and it's compacted. And then the bricks are cured rather than, than fired. So they don't need to be fired in a kiln. They're not, we're not chemically changing clay into a different material. Calcium silicate bricks are made from lime mixed with quartz or other silicous rock and sometimes colorants. And these bricks produce a very accurate, uniform brick with very sharp edges. The process of manufacturing a calcium silicate brick requires that the materials are mixed together until the lime is completely hydrated and then the mixture is pressed into moulds, moved into an autoclave for two or three hours and that helps to speed up the chemical hardening. And bricks are available in different shapes. Commonly we'll find a frogged brick or a perforated brick or a solid brick and depending on the application you might choose to use one of these shapes. So solid brick has a very uh, level surface at the top, so there's a consistent mortar bed, but it doesn't use a lot of mortar. So these might be used in situations where we would want to reduce the amount of mortar being used. A frogged brick is a brick with an indentation at the top and usually the bottom. That's sometimes where you see the brick manufacturer's name. And this comes from a process where a brick is pressed into a mould or the material is pressed into a mould and it's pressed down in the middle to make sure the material goes right into the corners of the mould. So we saw earlier that Roman bricks are a different size from modern bricks. And in the modern age, we tend to use bricks of a uniform size. So what size are they? Bricks are usually 250 millimetres long by 102.5 millimetres wide by 65 millimetres high. But there are bricks available which are 73 millimetres thick rather than 65 millimetres. 
So how do we use these bricks once we've got them made? We need to look at terminology. There are some different orientations that we can use standard bricks in. The first would be a soldier course, where we're taking a standard brick and we're laying it vertically. So the long edge is going upwards in the wall. This is commonly seen over windows. We can also take the short end of a brick and build that into a wall. And that might be common where we're trying to use the brick across two layers of the wall. The long edge of a brick, if laid horizontally, we would refer to that as a stretcher. And the little gaps between the bricks, we would refer to as the parapens. There are three main types of brick available in the UK. Facing brick, engineering brick and common brick. A facing brick is a brick that you might use on a facade. We would choose these for their aesthetic qualities and they're likely to be of a consistent appearance. An engineering brick is a brick that's used for its high compressive strength. They're traditionally used in civil engineering or foundations and we would use these where we need good strength and resistance to frost and water. These tend to be available in only really two colours, a red and a blue. A common brick contrary to its name, isn't actually that common. And they tend to be lower quality bricks. They have a less consistent appearance and a much lower compressive strength. So we wouldn't really use these where we need a durable brick. And realistically, they're only really going to be used for internal brickwork. So the next thing we need to consider is how we're actually going to use the brick. What kind of patterns are we going to make on the wall? The first and most common pattern that we see is stretcher bond. This is where bricks are laid one on top of the other with their long edges exposed. Next would be Flemish bond, where each row has alternating headers and stretchers. English bond has one row of headers and then one row of stretchers and then one row of headers alternating upwards through the wall. Sussex Bond is a pattern made of three stretchers to one header and that pattern is then repeated up the wall with an offset. There are many more brick bond patterns but what they all have in common is that joints, perpen joints between layers, between courses, are never immediately above each other. And if you look back over the previous slides, you'll notice that there's always an offset when looking at a perpen joint, and that's to stop any weaknesses within the wall. So in conclusion, brick is a historic and a modern building material which is used throughout the world. There's a rich history of brick making that goes back over 9,000 years, and some of the ancient methods that were used in those early days have survived into the modern era. Modern brickmaking provides us with various types of bricks that we can use for different areas or different uses. And specific methods for laying bricks have been developed, which allow us to create walls which combine structure and aesthetics. So aspects that you should take from this lecture are that historic sun-dried bricks are used in areas with low rainfall, that fired bricks are more durable and can be produced more quickly, that different bricks are available for different uses, and that different methods of laying bricks can, can create walls with very different appearances. Okay, thank you very much for listening, and if you have any questions, please ask me in the studio.